Alright, so let's continue in our exploration of polar conic sections. In this example, let's identify and sketch the equation r is equal to 12 over 6 plus 2 by sine theta. So once again, the first thing we need to do is to get the equation in the form of r is equal to l over 1 plus e sine theta, where l is the length of the semilatus rectum and e is the eccentricity. So with r is equal to 12, divided by 6 plus 2 sine theta. We can modify this equation by multiplying the top and bottom by 1 sixth. This gives us 2 on the top and 1 plus 1 third sine theta on the bottom. So from here the eccentricity which gives us the type of conic section is equal to 1 third. So we note that the eccentricities between 0 and 1. So this means that we have an ellipse. And the ellipse will have a focal point at the pole. And because we have a sine theta instead of a cos theta, it will be orientated vertically. Alright, so let's start to make a rough sketch of this. So we have a focus at the pole. The major axis of the ellipse is going to be in the vertical direction. So the minor axis is going to be in the uh, horizontal direction. And we can just connect these points all together to form a rough ellipse. A very rough one in my case. Let's have a go at that again. That's a bit better, isn't it? Now the latest rectum of the ellipse is going to be in line with the polar axis. So we'll start labeling a few points around here. So we have a uh, vertex, a major vertex at A, and another one at A prime. We have a minor vertex at B and B prime. We will need the center point at some stage, so let's call this capital C. And now without doing any working, we can straight away find the coordinates of this point here because the distance or the radius r from the focus to this point is L because it's a semilatus rectum. So this point will have the polar coordinates of L and it's at the angle of 0. Similarly, on the opposite side, this point here will have a radius of L but it will be at an angle of pi. Now the major vertices, we need to find out what r is equal to when the angle theta is equal to pi on 2, or 90 degrees. Because the major vertex a is at that angle. So if we substitute that into the equation, we have 2 divided by 1 plus 1 third by sine of pi on 2. Sine of pi on 2 is equal to 1, so that's just 1 third times 1, which equals 1 third. So on the bottom we have 1 plus 1 third is equal to 4 thirds. We have the 2 remaining on the top. So 2 divided by 4 thirds, well this is the equivalent of 6 divided by 4. So it's 2 times the 3 over 4. And this simplifies down to 3 on 2. So the coordinates of A are 3 on 2, comma, pi on 2. For A prime, we want to find what R is when the angle is at 3 pi on 2, or 270 degrees. So substituting this in, we have 2 divided by 1 plus, now actually minus, because sine of 3 pi on 2 is equal to minus 1, so 1 third times minus 1 gives minus 1 third. So we have 2 on the top divided by 1 minus 1 third is equal to 2 thirds. So this will be the equivalent of 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. So A prime is at the polar coordinates of 3 comma 3 pi on 2. Okay, so we can label that on our diagram.
Okay, now let's find the center point. So you may recall when we derived the Cartesian form of the ellipse that the vertex, or the major vertex, is at a distance of A, which we call the semi-major axis, the semi-major axis length that is. So it would make sense that the distance from major vertex to major vertex, the distance A, A prime, to be equal to 2 times the semi-major axis length. And this would of course imply that little a is equal to a a prime divided by 2. Okay, so if we reference the focal point, the point a is at a distance of 1 third, sorry, 3 on 2 away from the focal point. And the a prime is at a distance of 3 away from the focal point. So if we add these two together and divide it by 2, so this works out to be 9 on 2 divided by 2, which equals 9 over 4. So this tells us how far C is away from A, which is good, but it doesn't yet tell us the coordinates of C. For that, we need the distance of CF. Let's label this as little c. Now, sorry, I know this might be confusing, but uh, we use little c for convention. Again, from the Cartesian form of the ellipse, we found that little c is equal to a times e. All right, so if you want more information on where this came from, I'll include a link to it. So then we have a is equal to 9 over 4, and e is equal to 1 third. So this is equal to then 3 on 4. Okay, so now that we have little c, we can say that the center point capital C is at a coordinate, polar coordinate of 3 on 4, comma, the angle will be 3 pi on 2. All right, so let's label that. So we have C here at 3 on 4, comma, 3 pi on 2. Okay, finally, let's work out the minor vertices. Now that we have the center point, the minor vertices are at a distance of B to either side of the center point. So again, recall from the Cartesian form that B squared is equal to A squared outside of 1 minus E squared. So we know what A squared is, we know what A is, so it's 9 on 4, and that's squared, by 1 minus e is one third and that's squared. So we'll leave the 9 on 4 squared as it is for now. The second parentheses evaluates to 8 over 9. So 1 is 9 over 9. 1 third squared is 1 over 9. So 9 over 9 minus 1 over 9 is equal to 8 over 9. So I'll write that as 9 on 4 by 9 on 4 by 8 on 9. A 9 can cancel the 9. A4 can cancel with an 8, so we have 2 left on the top. And the 2 can cancel with a 4 here, so we have 2 left on the bottom. So we're left with 9 over 2. So B is equal to then the square root of 9 over 2, which equals 3 on root 2. Okay, so correcting these. So instead of L, I'll write that as 2. So we have 2, 0, and 2, comma, pi. So with that, we have fully defined the ellipse from the equation r is equal to 12 divided by 6 plus 2 sine theta. All right, so that's it for this example. Hit that like button if you have found this useful. And as always, please ask any questions and give feedback in the comments below. Subscribe and share. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.